For a majority of American history leading up to the 1930s, the circus had been the leading form of popular entertainment in the U.S. From as early as the 1870s to around 1915 was the golden age of the American circus, and going into the 1920s, the circus industry was still going strong, despite setbacks such as the Spanish flu epidemic and World War I. During this time, the circus produced its share of stars, but not attained the same level of celebrity as Lillian Leitzel. Dubbed by some as the Queen of the Circus, she reached international fame on a scale seldom seen before. However, on February 15, 1931, famed circus aerialist Lillian Leitzel died of injuries sustained from a fall two days prior, caused by faulty rigging. The loss of the biggest celebrity to come from circus arts would be a significant turning point for the industry, as it had lost a large source of its mainstream appeal in an era where other forms of entertainment were gaining popularity. This would contribute to the end of circus arts as a leading form of entertainment in the United States and the evolution of circus arts into the significantly smaller industry that we know it as today. Modern circus is considered to have been created in Europe in the 1700s and was brought to the U.S. around 1793. Over time, American circuses evolved from stationary shows and arenas to touring canvas tents, making the entertainment form more accessible to most areas in the U.S. by the early 1900s. During this time, everything going on in town would stop when the circus was performing. School was canceled, all other events were delayed, and everyone went to see the show. According to the book Women of the American Circus, by 1905, at the height of the circus golden age, before the advent of film, radio, and television, the circus was the largest entertainment industry the world had ever seen. The Roaring Twenties marked a period of time where Americans were remarkably optimistic and ready to push the limits of what was possible, and the circus was no exception. Going into the 20th century, a few circus companies had consolidated into the main few forces in the industry, mainly through the combination of the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and & Bailey, and through this big show, a spectacle was formed on a scale suitable to the desire of the 1920s for something bigger and better. Female performers were by far the most recognized names and faces at this time in the circus industry, like equestrian May Worth and tightwire artist Bird Millman, but Lillian Leitzel was the most notable of these stars. Celebrity culture was also starting to more fully form in the 20s, so celebrity personalities, whether they were performers, actors, musicians, or artists, were starting to be more prevalent and glorified in popular culture and society. The increase of quality and various communication and news methods also meant that these celebrities would be more well-known than ever. This would lead to celebrities of the time, such as Lillian Leitzel, gaining more notoriety than they had ever been able to before. Lillian Leitzel was born in Leopoldina, Elitza Pelican in 1892 and spent most of her childhood with her grandparents in Germany. She was from a circus family, and she started training at a gymnasium about, at about three years old. Her mother was a performer, and she would go on to perform with her mother and aunts as the Leamy Ladies at the start of her career, where she traveled around the U.S. and Europe. When the Leamy Ladies disbanded, most of the troupe returned to Europe, but Lazel stayed in America and performed in vaudeville shows, gaining popularity through her aerial acts that would eventually get her hired by the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and & Bailey combined show. Her act started with her emerging from backstage, and when the announcer proclaimed Lily and Lazel, all circus activity was focused on the spot where the star was to perform. She would ascend up a rope to a pair of rings, reminiscent of the rings used by male gymnasts today, and transfer to them. Once she was up on the rings, she would hit a variety of poses that showcased her strength. Then, she would move up from the rings to a rope with a metal loop she would put her hand through. Hanging onto the rope with one hand, she would throw her body over one shoulder in a move called a water and plunge, which is what she was most widely known for. Her shoulder would dislocate and click back into place with each rotation. She would do this about 60 to 100 times in a performance, with her record being 249 rotations. While the act itself was highly impressive, one of the main reasons for her popularity was how she interacted with and charmed the crowd. 
She had a great stage presence, even while performing superhuman feats. While she was performing with the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey, she was among the most highly paid and most valued performers in the entire company. Her image was reproduced in souvenir programs more than that of any other performer, according to Kate Holmes in Stage Women. She was provided her own personal railroad car, a privilege not granted to any other performer at the time, furnished with a baby grand piano. Leitzel was declared by many the queen of the circus and was an international sensation. However, all of this would come crashing down, literally, one night in Copenhagen, Denmark. On February 13, 1931, Lisa was performing her one own plunges when the swivel that attached the metal loop to the rope broke, and she fell nearly 40 feet to the ground onto a rubber mat, landing on her shoulders and neck. She was rushed to the hospital, where she passed away due to these injuries two days later, on February 15th, at the age of 39. The industry and the world were saddened by Lillian Laitzel's death. Before a hockey game at Madison Square Garden two nights later, an announcer went out on the ice to pay tribute to her. To the memory of Lillian Laitzel, he said, God rest her soul. However, the effects of her death reached further than simply on those who knew and loved her. Lillian Laitzel's image and act had sold tickets and drawn in customers to wherever she was performing. With her death, the circus had lost a vital part of its mainstream appeal at a point where it was already competing with newer forms of entertainment and media. Movies were becoming more advanced and more accessible to Americans, with the automobile making it possible for people to drive out to see the latest film. Radio shows were also a prominent form of entertainment, and they could be enjoyed from a person's home. Lillian Laidso wasn't the only thing plummeting in the 1930s either, as the economy was left in shambles in the Great Depression. Businesses were struggling to stay open, and circuses certainly weren't an exception. People who could not buy food were not going to buy tickets. While circus companies survived, they never returned to the prominence they had enjoyed in the early 20th century. Lillian Laitzel's death indicated the end of arguably the last era when circus celebrities could globally draw upon such powerfully coordinated publicity to inspire the popular imagination, as there hasn't been an era since where circus performers could gain fame on par with the most famous artists and actors. Although the popularity of circus was on the decline, that meant that movies and radio enjoyed a period of expansion and popularity that would not have happened without the fall of circus arts. The celebrity culture that had propelled Lillian Leitzel to fame still undoubtedly persists to this day, proven by modern-day celebrity phenomenon such as the Kardashians, Beyonce, Taylor Swift, and countless others, making the shift from Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey combined show to the A-list tour. While circus arts have undergone a major change and a loss of influence over the past century, it's not completely accurate to say that the circus is dead, even if circus arts today do not often consist of giant, spectacle-focused touring shows like they did in Laitzel's time. The biggest shows, such as major Cirque du Soleil productions, tour a series of arenas if they tour at all, as many stay performing in one venue. The majority of other productions are independently run and small and many artists work in a series of different gigs, performing at corporate events or festivals. Circus arts are also becoming more accessible at the recreational levels, with circus art studios opening to teach new people circus skills. Dedicated artists are still doing superhuman feats and entertaining audiences all over the world. Although her death was an indicator of the end of circus arts as one of the predominant forms of entertainment in the United States, Lillian Laitzel's legacy lives on today through the performers and celebrities dedicated to entertaining their audiences, even if circus arts will likely never return to their former level of popularity.